Florida officials are sounding the alarm. Mandatory evacuations have already begun in the Keys tonight. The governor now urging the people of his state, the entire state, to be prepared. The track making all the difference, but either scenario, as we just mentioned, almost all of Florida in the crosshairs. ABC's Alex Perez is there tonight. Tonight, long lines, bare shelves, and frayed nerves as all of Florida braces for what could be the worst hurricane to hit the state in decades. It's very important that everybody in our state gets prepared. And take a look here at this Publix grocery store where all the sports drinks and water would be. The shelves almost already completely empty. People scooping up what they can when they can. The governor already declaring a state of emergency. This is a category five hurricane, yeah? Yeah. So it's just like, it's really scary. So you have to be prepared as much as possible. For some, Harvey's destruction in Texas is fueling the fear. I saw what happened in Houston, four feet of rain. They're saying this storm's going to be worse. In the low-lying Florida Keys, mandatory evacuations. Officials telling tourists to get out as soon as possible. Patricia and Valerie Lynn rushed here from Houston, where they were dealing with Harvey, now faced with a new storm. I looked at them and I said, we got 10 minutes, pack your bags. We're driving to Dallas, caught a flight Monday morning to here. Back on the mainland, the Broward County mayor warning residents not to rely on shelters. Going to stay with family or friends outside of the evacuation zone is the best choice since shelters only provide for basic needs. Hurricane Irma, seen from space, the strongest in the Atlantic Basin since Wilma in 2005. Is South Florida ready? Well, I'd say we're not ready. No one is ever ready for a Category 5 hurricane. In the 25 years since Hurricane Andrew, construction has boomed in Florida, which toughened up its building codes. During that time, nearly one in 10 new homes in the entire country were built in the state. The place has grown like crazy since Andrew. Uh, there are a lot of people who haven't been through this before. So let's get to Alex Perez live in Miami tonight. And Alex, we've seen evacuations already for the Florida Keys issued today. What are authorities right there in Miami saying tonight? Well, David, officials here are saying evacuations in Miami-Dade could start as early as tomorrow. They are also reminding people to do things like take pictures of their important documents, refill prescriptions, and, of course, very important, have a spare or alternative power supply for your cell phone. David? All right, Alex Perez in Miami for us tonight. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching. Stores announcing they're out of water, loads of people lining up to get supplies in stores. We also have long lines at gas stations, people lining up to get propane. Everyone is preparing here across South Florida as they await the arrival of Hurricane Irma. And right now, Irma continues to strengthen in the Atlantic. This is an extremely powerful storm. Top sustained winds 185 miles per hour. That is one of the most powerful hurricanes in the Atlantic on record. It continues to turn closer here to the Leeward Islands where they could be experiencing tropical storm force winds this afternoon and hurricane force winds tonight. We do have watches and warnings up along the islands and we'll be monitoring this path as it works its way through the islands. We could be talking about very dangerous storm surge along with those catastrophic winds coming in here heavy rainfall then working its way very dangerously here over the Bahamas and Cuba on its way toward Florida again this is an extremely powerful hurricane so we are talking here about winds of 175 to 185 as it hits the leeward islands where we could see that catastrophic damage there are states of emergency that are in play along its path as far as what we are anticipating once it gets here closer to Florida we are anticipating a turn but still too early to tell exactly the timing of that and where it will be turning and what impacts it'll have. But certainly folks in Florida need to be preparing immediately. Hurricane Irma has just moments ago been upgraded to a major storm, a Category 4 hurricane. The Florida appearing to be right in its track. Authorities there are sounding the alarm, warning residents to stock up and get their emergency plans in order right now. I'm going to go straight to meteorologist Tom Sater. Tom, the various models are starting to agree here that the continental yes. U.S. is in the hurricane's path. When might Irma hit? 
Well, you know, let me back up to Thursday when we first introduced Irma. We said that we're really going to need about four or five days, and that's starting to unfold. As you mentioned, the models are getting into agreement. But when we showed you a model last Thursday, the European model and the U.S. model were 1,200 miles apart. The U.S. model up by the northeastern U.S. and the European down by Florida. Well, now they're pretty close, and I'll show you. This system right now is just as strong as Harvey was when it made land for it in devastated Rockport, Texas. The winds are the same at 130, and it's moving right over the northern islands of the Lesser Antilles. That's St. Kitts and Nevis. That's Antigua, Barbuda, uh, Anguilla. In fact, might move right over that. Then it's the U.S. British Virgin Islands that have a watch. That'll go to a warning as well as Puerto Rico. Six to nine foot storm surges, 10 inches of rain. Most of the heavy rain, I think, is going to stay over water. But here's a, just a little time plan with tropical storm force winds. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Turks and Caicos, Dominican Republic, Haiti, then Cuba, and possibly even extending into southern Florida. But let's run the National Hurricane Center track, and you'll get an idea. It hasn't really moved much. It's been trending south. And if you look at this, you think, well, my goodness, this is heading right into the Gulf of Mexico. We can't rule that out, but I don't think that's the best case scenario right now. We have still a window open, although it's closing, but we have a window open that we could see the system turn to the north and stay out in the Atlantic off the coast. But that window is shutting quickly. Mm -hmm. Most likely what we're looking at, Pamela, as we get in toward Friday, we're looking at a turn to the right. Mm -hmm. We don't know when that will happen, so we can't give you exact location of a landfall or the timing just yet. But let me show you the European now with the U.S. model. And as we put these in comparison now, first of all, they're on top of each other. So we start out at the same location. You want to see agreement. They're not moving from each other. But as we get closer out, or farther out, I should say, there is some variation. This is Sunday afternoon. Now, last Thursday, it was Saturday night we had it here, so it hasn't been moving much. Let's take it now to 9-11, and it does look like if it doesn't make landfall in Florida, somewhere in the coastal Carolinas, so everyone needs to start preparing, have a plan, sit down with the family, and discuss this next weekend. Maybe a major hurricane, at least uh, category mm. three, four, could be five. And of course, all this on the heels of Hurricane Harvey. Tom Sater, thank you very much. As the Gulf Coast cleans up after Hurricane Harvey, millions of Americans are looking ahead to another potential disaster. Hurricane Irma was just upgraded to a category five storm. It now packs maximum sustained winds of 175 miles an hour. Florida's governor declared a state of emergency ahead of a potential impact. The storm could strike islands in the eastern Caribbean tonight before heading toward Puerto Rico and the Bahamas. Forecasters say Irma could turn north this weekend, heading for Florida or the Carolinas. Manuel Bohorkas is in Miami with the latest there. Manuel, good morning to you. Good morning. I'm standing in the Brickell neighborhood near downtown Miami. And during a storm last month, this area flooded after heavy rains. In fact, this is what it looked like here on August 1st. As Hurricane Irma may have its sights set on the U.S., people in Florida are preparing for the worst. People in South Florida are emptying store shelves, filling grocery carts, and packing their cars with water. It's not good for you. It's not good for distress. You have to do it early, as early as you can. Monday, hurricane hunters flew through the storm for the first time as it gained strength in the Atlantic. We will know more as the week progresses what kind of a threat it really poses to, uh, to Miami-Dade County. Carlos Jimenez, the mayor of flood-prone Miami-Dade County, is watching Hurricane Irma closely. Well, the storm surge is uh, really the thing that, that kills the most people, so that's what really we're worried about. Storm surge is when the sea level rises during intense storms, pushing water ashore, leading to flooding. A recent study found Florida has 2.7 million properties at risk, the most in the U.S. Miami Beach averages around four feet above sea level and fights flooding at high tide on a regular basis. Last month, heavy rain turned the city streets into rivers. The anti-flood pumps failed during a power outage. The city has ordered portable backup generators, but Mayor Philip Levine warned the pumps may not be enough. These pumps were designed for normal rain and, of course, sea level rise. They will be helpful in the event of a storm, but they're not designed for hurricanes. It has been more than 100 years since two Category 4 hurricanes have made U.S. landfall within the same year. And with Harvey fresh on everyone's minds, the concern here in Miami and throughout South Florida, of course, is that if Irma makes landfall, it could also be disastrous. 
Jeff. Manuel, thank you very much. Pictures from space show the size of Hurricane Irma. Meteorologist Jeff Jamison of our CBS station KTVT is tracking it. Jeff, good morning. Good morning. We now have a Category 5 monster storm in Irma that's out there in the Atlantic, still about 250 miles east of the Leeward Islands. It's moving to the west with winds sustained at 175 miles per hour, the strongest Atlantic hurricane in 10 years. It's moving northwest as we go through time into the weekend and does take that turn toward Florida by Sunday. Our American computer model has been remarkably consistent with making that path into the Florida Straits and by Sunday making a landfall near the Florida Keys. Our European computer model has also been very similar to the American computer model, drifting it toward the Florida Keys late into the weekend. The southeast United States bracing for the storm, in particular Florida. Uh, here's a look at Irma as it makes its way over toward the Leeward Islands and toward Puerto Rico, a Category 4 hurricane with winds at 150 miles per hour, moving west at 14 miles per hour. This is uh, just below Category 5 hurricane status. Category 5 storm started at 157 miles per hour. So we're just 7 miles per hour away from that. Hurricane hunters are investigating the storm right now. Uh, expected to stay a very powerful Cat 4 straight through possibly the Leeward Islands over Puerto Rico. Could be over Hispaniola. Could be up in the Bahamas here by Friday and over Cuba on Saturday, possibly right over Cuba, possibly south of Cuba, possibly up here on this end of the cone, up in the Bahamas here, and then that little bit of a turn more to the northwest does include a big chunk of our viewing area in the five-day cone, but this is subject to change over the next few days, so we're going to continue to watch it carefully. Computer models in pretty good agreement over the next few days that this will hug the coast at least of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola and up toward Cuba. Uh, here you see the European model in pink here. Uh, that goes up the west coast of Florida. The American model uh, more up the center. The Canadian model over here in the Gulf of Mexico. So there's a lot of changes that could happen here over the next four to five to six days. Just keeping an eye on Irma, obviously, yes. Danny. Yes, yeah, so all eyes on Irma as we start our Tuesday and as we start each day for the next few. As we head through the weekend. That's when us here, especially in Southwest Florida, will be watching closely in terms of potential impact. I think it's important to start with the fact that we still don't have many answers. We're not saying that this is a sure thing, a sure direct impact to Southwest Florida. All we're trying to do is make sure that you at home are prepared in the case, uh, we do see a severe threat from Irma, but there is still plenty of time for the forecast track to change. And of course, we'll bring you all those changes here on Fox 4. As for this morning, your Tuesday starting with a he strong, healthy Category 4 hurricane. Wind speeds right now at 150 miles per hour as the outer bands are already impacting the northern Leeward Islands. We do have hurricane warnings in place as far west as about Puerto Rico as we start our morning. And those hurricane warnings will continue to be issued as the track continues to track west and northwest. So right now moving west, but we do expect a little northerly shift as we head into the next day, uh, day or two. So Wednesday 2 a.m. still 150 mile per hour winds. It does look like it'll weaken slightly, but there's just not a lot to weaken Irma in general as it continues to track through the Caribbean. So it'll stay a very strong and very dangerous storm as it does uh, head toward just north of Hispaniola, just north of Cuba. And then what, right? That's the big question. Uh, impacts to Southwest Florida. I will tell you, have to be honest, the threat to Southwest Florida is increasing, but we still don't have all the answers. We're not it's not time to panic because there is still a lot that can change between now and Sunday, Monday, when potential threats would arrive to Southwest Florida. As the track stands, it does look like the official track from the National Hurricane Center takes it just north of Cuba. It's good for Cuba, of course, but bad for Florida. Typically, uh, it's our last line of defense. Cuba is such a mountainous island, mountainous terrain, that it helps to rip apart these hurricanes. At this point, still looks like a Category 4 as it tracks just south of the Florida Peninsula. But then what? That's the big question, right? And that's the question we're trying to answer for you because that will dictate the severity of the impacts to southwest Florida. As far as your spaghetti plots here, Forecast models here, tightly clustered just north of Hispaniola, tightly clustered just north of Cuba. That's why we think that this uh, more than likely will stay north of Cuba and not weaken significantly. But it's that northerly turn that all models still take. It's just when. When is the big question? We're still just a little too far out to tell you for sure, although models are working at it. Uh, right now, it looks like most of those forecast models, at least here, have it moving up the Florida Peninsula. But again, still plenty of time for this to change. And this 
far out. Uh, we're talking a couple hundred miles in terms of east or west, and that would make the difference for southwest Florida. So time to prepare, not time to panic yet. Still plenty of time for this to change. The European model, typically the most dependable model at this point. The latest runs are changing. And again, a couple hundred miles when we're talking about the Florida Peninsula makes a huge difference in terms of severity of impact. Right now, it looks like it moves right up the center of the peninsula. Switching it over to the GFS, which is the American model, looks about the same. This one uh, just updated, so it's a little glitchy, uh, but I wanted to give you the latest run of this. Right now, the GFS now shifting a little further east, but again, this is not a short sure thing. Uh, I'm telling you, a couple hundred miles really makes a difference in terms of severity of impact. This is a little closer to what we saw with Matthew, which here in southwest Florida wasn't all that severe. Some of our inland spots, but not necessarily our coastal communities. The GFS, uh, of course, that's encouraging for us, but one run of m one model never gives us the answer, and this is why. This is the GFS Ensemble, which means uh, the GFS model run multiple times with just one or two factors changed, and that gives us all the, the spread. A couple of those stay off the East Coast, not impacting Florida, a few of them right over the state, a few of them even in the Gulf. So we still have a lot of questions here. We still have a lot of questions to answer, and it's all going to depend on the steering currents. And what are those? It's an upper level trough, and it's an area of high pressure. As this upper level trough dips down, so a dip in the jet stream here, it's going to act as a steering current. This is going to push push that high pressure uh, back a little bit and and then as the trough then once again lifts north it'll allow that high pressure to pu push back in to build back in and that's what's going to push Irma a little further west if we can get that trough to stick around a little longer the high pressure won't be able to push back in and it'll keep Irma uh, moving a little further east because Irma's just trying to get around this area of high pressure so those are the, the questions that will get answered in the next couple of days that's going to dictate exactly where we see the uh, greatest impacts but this is the bottom line this is what I want you to take away. Number one, the threat is increasing for Southwest Florida. Uh, unfortunately, that's the case. But the severity of impacts is still unclear. So all you need to know, it is time to prepare, not time to panic, but it is time to prepare. And over the next few days, we'll get the questions answered in terms of what kind of impact we're expecting uh, in terms of where that turn north takes.